Hello, we left Philippians 2 behind uh, yesterday. We finished in uh, Philippians chapter 2, so therefore we start uh, chapter 3 today. We also, um, in my reflection yesterday, was perhaps a little uh, down and talking about people who are face a risk and the reality of being murdered, being killed for their faith. But chapter 3 begins with a note of optimism. Further, my brothers and sisters, Paul writes, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. It is a safeguard for you. Paul was talking about illness. He's been talking about the pressures uh, of, of imprisonment, of being chained for Christ, of uh, the, the difficulties of, of the people around him who try to support him. But at the back of his mind and now coming sort of forward to the front of his mind again is this constant refrain that he offers to rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to remind you that it's worth rejoicing and rejoice again in the Lord. It's a safeguard for you. We live in a world that is horrific at the moment, don't we? There is so much war and bloodshed and hatred uh, that, um, that kind of fills our news screens and our newspapers and perhaps fills our de uh, increasingly depressed minds. But there is equally, whilst it's maybe not shouted aloud so quickly, there is equally much to rejoice about. The fact that we're alive, the fact that God has blessed us with another day, the fact that God has blessed us with the friends, the like of which we've been thinking about over the last couple of weeks, the fact that God has offers us support and um, encouragement in what we're doing, the fact that we have a saviour, a saviour who, who died and was buried, but who rose again to bring eternal hope of salvation for each of us. We have so much to rejoicing and there is much more than that isn't there but let's remember to do it let's remember to rejoice let's not get so bogged down by all that horrifies and scares us and and, and challenges us and depresses us let's not get so overwhelmed by all of that that we we, we struggle to rejoice look around and enjoy the blessings it's it's a good thing for us to do. It's a safe thing for us to do, to remind ourselves, to, to kind of get the balance right in our lives. Yes, of course, there are all sorts of, of horrid situations that we should be praying for, but let's rejoice in the Lord always. We can show God that, that we believe that he is in control. We can show our neighbours that we believe that we have a, a king who is somehow able to do that which we can't. And he, he brings us through, he carries us through. And don't forget that, that promise from Romans 8. There is nothing in all of creation that needs separate us from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus. Now that is something to rejoice about. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that you give us so very much. And we forget most of the detail. We, we overlook your blessings, but we, we just want to say thank you now. And I just invite us all Lord, to, to take a moment to, to count a few blessings. What have you particularly enjoyed and benefited from over recent days? What do you want to say to God? And while you're thinking about that and applying that, let me say thank you and good day.